just to speak a few words, sentences, they will say anything and everything, even not related to the answer. See, you're giving an answer like that is exposing yourself in a way that you are not fit. So be careful in what you say. Speak in short, simple sentences and to the point. That is the key to successful interviews. And look into the eye of the person and that can be done only by looking at the camera. When you look at the camera, you're making full eye contact with that person. But if you look at the screen, you're not making eye contact with the person. That is what it is. So I keep reminding you and boys will still make mistakes. They will keep saying things which are not related to the subject. If for any reason you are doing well and there comes a question which says, uh, which you cannot answer, tell them, sir, I do not know the answer to that question, but I shall definitely find out. And say that with a lot of vehemence. In other words, with a lot of sincerity, saying that you will find out. Whether you are selected or not, you will definitely find out the answer to that question. That should be the attitude you put across to the person. It is not necessary for you to be able to answer 100% of all the questions. And sometimes, if you come out of the interview thinking, I have answered all the questions, so I should pass. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. Believe me, it doesn't happen. You may have answered all the questions, but it is up to the prerogative of the examiner. He feels you're not being sincere. He feels your clarity of answering the questions is not right. Or he feels that you have been talking out of topic, which you don't realize, but he will realize. So you have to be very careful in what you speak to him. So this NYK interview is going to be quite stringent. I think Mr. Day himself has made out all the questions. They will be all new questions. And good amount of them will be in marine auxiliaries. So prepare your marine auxiliaries because at the junior level, you will be dealing mainly with auxiliaries. Slightly higher level, fourth engineer, third engineer, you will be dealing mainly with internal combustion engines. So be very sure about this particular area. Marine auxiliaries, ICE, Naval Architecture, Safety, and General Communication Skills. You have to have good communication skills. That means names of the parts should be well mentioned, correctly mentioned. So there you have to be a little cautious. All right. So I think we have 68 persons on the class. Now we can start. Sir? The, yes, what is it? So, like uh, when interviewers would be asking questions and uh, what sort of open-end answers we can give them. Uh, like you said, you can't be off the topic or you can't be uh, saying a lot of stuff about other the topics and all uh, about other things. Then what we have to do with open-end questions then? Open-end question meaning some question that you cannot answer or something like he tells you, introduce yourself. Like that what? that gives the scope of like showing your perspective like you are a good person or you are what sort of person you are that is like open-end questions i see be very very positive about yourself if he tells you what are your weak points and what are your strong points strong points are honesty integrity perseverance ability to dedicate myself to a particular work with sincerity, those are all positive points. When he asks you, what are your negative points? What do you think are your weak points? Tell him, I don't believe I have any weak points. If you think I have weak points, I definitely overcome it. So I don't believe I have any weak points. That should be the answer. Now, if you say, sir, I don't like to get up early in the morning because PT fallen is 6 o'clock. I hate to get up so early. That is my weak point. Then he knows you're a lazy fellow. And he will not be giving you a positive credit on that. So never ever mention your weaknesses. What are your weaknesses? Say, I do not believe I have any weakness. But he can say, how can it be possible that you don't have any? Sir, I have a weakness for cricket. Okay. You have a weakness for cricket means if there is cricket, you are very interested. 
but it does not reflect negatively on you. I have a weakness for football. I am interested too much in football. Okay. That is not really a weakness. But if you say, I hate to get up at early in the morning at 6 o'clock, or you say, I have a weakness for something that is negative, then you are in trouble. So say something which is actually positive and mention that as your negative. So he will realize that this fellow loves cricket, but it's not really a negative issue. So that should be the way you deal with questions. And where you absolutely don't know the answer, do not try to fill up the gap by saying something to get across. Tell him outright, sir, I do not have the answer to that question, but I shall definitely find out. That should be the approach. That means you don't beat around the bush, come to the point. Okay. Yush Kumar is still coming in. Okay. So let's move on ahead. Be honest. That is the point. When you're talking to him, be absolutely honest. You see your honesty. And you know, one of the key qualities for an officer is to be honest. Something that has become obsolete, outdated, and everybody laughs at. But it is still the truth. An officer does not tell a lie. Remember this for all your life. An officer does not tell, your, tell a lie. If he is in a position where he is almost compelled to tell a lie, he must say, Sir, I decline to answer that question. You draw your own conclusions. That's the best way to avoid telling a lie when you're forced in a circumstances where you have to tell a lie to get out. You say, I decline to answer that question. You may draw your own conclusions. So you're not telling a lie and you're getting out of that difficult position. So that's how an officer gets out. But he will not tell a lie. That is important. I'm still having my breakfast tea. All right, let's proceed with our subject. We have waited almost 12 minutes. So 12 minutes, we are out of time. Okay, Ravi Prakash, good luck. Okay, now your first, this is the PowerPoint number three. And it is related to indicator diagrams and power calculations. All right, the first page what we have is, <clears throat> what is, what is the whole idea of having indicator cards and power calculation. An indication to engine performance is obtained through indicator cards. These provide compression pressure, peak pressure, scavenge and exhaust pressure conditions. Engine power is calculated from these parameters. All right. So mainly you're reading out the pressures at different stages during the combustion process. So this is what gives the condition within the engine as well as the performance of the engine. So engine health conditions are also derived from such information. There comes somebody. Oh. Raghu Vanshi. Raghu Vanshi as usual lit. Okay. I will not object to anybody coming because there are a lot of boys who are having difficulty with the internet. I sometimes have those difficulties myself. So I guess the boys are also having similar problems. So remember, there are two things that indicator card provide. First is the conditions within the engine. That are the peak pressure, compression pressure, scavenge pressure, and exhaust pressure. And the second thing is the health condition of the engine. How well or how healthy the engine is running, that will be decided on by getting these parameters. All right. <clears throat> I think this is reasonably clear. Now, um, I don't know one thing is missing. I have missed out something. I'll do one thing. I'll just close this and come back to it because in my earlier class, I had deleted something. Don't save. OK, now I will go back again. This is PPT3. PPT3. Yeah, now we are back. Correct. So this was the page event, and now this is the page required. Now here is the instrument. Before I proceed any further, everybody wants to know what is the instrument that is used to take the indicator cards. Now I have been able to get two diagrams. 
one is on the right hand side which is actually for a steam engine and this is the instrument we actually have in our workshop in college uh, oh somebody's come now parthi abhijit a class in charge is be a little authoritative and tell the boys to come in time okay so this is the instrument that we have in our college in our workshop store but it is related to the triple expansion steam engine which we have in the workshop i am sure all of you have seen that triple expansion steam engine i don't know if you have seen it working but it is actually a working engine and it works once we fire up that package boiler and generate adequate steam the engine works and it works reasonably well and for an engine which is almost 70 80 years old i think it's a it's in very good condition for it to be working and these were the engines which were used in the older ships before internal combustion engines were made on the left hand side is what we see that is really required this is what is used for internal combustion engines and exactly the same okay let's do away with this one how do we do out here to delete this okay now this i'm not going to show you that picture again but i'm going to show you this one first now this one what you see is the indicator card instrument i wish we were able to show you the actual instrument in hand it's about uh, you know it's not very big it can be held in your hand both the size and um, it weighs about 1 and 1/2 to 2 kg that's all 1 and 1/2 to 2 kg now this is the instrument used for taking indicator cards let me i have another diagram which is the showing the sectional view and that also i will show you but right now see the outside view what it looks like and let me explain what the details are let us say the right half side this right hand side what we have at the bottom is a nut this is actually a nut and two studs are protruding from the sides and this nut is fitted onto the indicator cock of the engine and to tighten the nut these studs are produced are here and with a small length of a spanner the spanner is actually a short pipe the pipe is fitted into over this stud and the whole nut can be turned and remember it has to be very tight you cannot afford any leakage if you have any leakage of the exhaust gas or compression air then the whole diagram is wrong so the under no circumstances should this nut allow any leakage when the indicator cock is open okay so now inside here inside what you cannot see is a piston the piston is about the diameter of your thumb same diameter it's a small piston and it has got actual piston rings made of carbon uh, sorry cast iron so these cast iron rings are very delicate and they are size of your finger rings about i think there are two two maybe three rings i don't remember maybe two rings two piston rings and that piston the piston rod is a rigid rod that rod comes right up and it is acting against the spring it is acting against the spring in other words when the compressed gas or when the gas pressure acts on the piston the piston works against the spring to move in the vertical direction apart from that the piston rod is connected to a system of linkages system of links which are right here and it is a very special link and this linkage is such that when the piston moves the scriber this little scriber or stylus it is also called a stylus when it moves this end point of the stylus will move only vertically right and this magnifies the movement of the point of at the end of the stylus in other words the piston movement may be 1 cm but the stylus movement at this point is 6 cm so that is why you have a system of linkages which does two things one is amplify the movement and number two the movement at the end of the stylus is absolutely vertical 
otherwise if you had a simple stylus with amplification the whole stylus would have moved in the form of an arc in a curved path so this end would have moved in a curved path that is what we do not want we want only vertical movement okay so when the gas pressure acts on the piston the piston works against the spring and the set of linkages to cause movement of the stylus in the vertical direction the end of the stylus has a i will not say needle point it is a sharp point a reasonably sharp point but it is not as sharp as a needle it can run over a paper that's all it will not cut the paper so it is slightly pointed is like a pencil point just like a pencil point all right but it is metal it is purely metal so that is the function of the right hand side if you have any questions to clarify further regarding the right hand side you can ask in the chat column now let's go on to the left hand side on the left hand side on the same base plate on the same base plate you have a drum this is a cylindrical hollow drum inside there is a coil spring this coil spring is such that when you rotate the drum the drum will rotate back into its original position it is like a coil spring which helps the drum to come back to its original position in other words the drum is capable of rotating about its own axis up to a certain level and then again able to return back to its original position so enable this rotation at the bottom you have a wheel this wheel is connected to the drum and a cord that means a string is wrapped around this wheel and then a little lower you have a pulley this pulley can swivel or change its position by opening this butterfly nut at the bottom you can see a butterfly nut it has got two vanes a butterfly nut is intended for finger operation only it is to be used with your fingers you cannot use a spanner over there so this is loosened and this whole pulley wheel is made to rotate to come on the outside and then the nut is tightened then the cord which is going around the drum goes over the pulley and comes down so when you pull the cord you are actually rotating the drum and when you release the cord the drum goes back to its normal original position now on the drum you have two steel clips these are two steel clips and they rest against the drum of course they also rotate with the drum that is not the point they also rotate with the drum and these two clips are intended to hold the card the card is a piece of paper and that paper is the size of your bank check everybody knows the size of a check book so the check paper is understood size of the check is the size of this card this card it is folded around and put over the drum and the ends of the paper are passed through these clips to hold the paper tightly against the surface of the drum okay now when the scriber moves up and down if the drum is not rotated and the gas pressure act on the underside of the uh, piston the piston will keep moving up and down the scriber will move up and down so this scriber will scratch on the paper into one single line along this part okay so it is giving only one line now when the gas pressure acts on the piston the pressure is not uniform it is a variation of the gas pressure all right the combustion pressure inside the cylinder is not a steady pressure first there is compression all right so from atmospheric level it goes up to the peak compression pressure fuel is injected and the pressure rises more up to the peak and then the fuel continues to ignite and the pressure of in the piston when it comes again past tdc then the pressure starts dropping so it drops until the piston is right down at bdc and the exhaust gas escapes and then the scavenger starts coming in so this is the time when the pressure is very low so because the pressure is varying on top of this gas on, on top of the piston inside this part of the indicator instrument 
the movement of the scriber is in variation to the gas pressure this is something you must understand the movement of the scriber is not steady it moves on the basis of the variation of the gas pressure because ultimately it is the variation of the gas pressure that moves the scriber i hope everybody understands that okay so the movement of the scriber is dependent on the pressure of the gas acting on that little piston inside here okay now when this drum is rotated the drum is going to be rotated in the same sequence as the piston movement now how is that achieved okay you see on the engine with links from the piston rod or connecting rod links are taken outside the engine you may not have been told or seen that but it is there and if you get a chance to go to college workshop try to find out it will be where the lubricators are you might have seen the engine where the lubricators are from inside the engine there is a rod which is penetrated upward at about mid length and this rod is just below the indicator cock okay it is just below the indicator cock and the end of a rod it has a sort of a hook l shaped hook it is got an l shaped hook so this cord that you see which is used to be pulled to rotate the drum is looped onto that hook so in other words when the cord is pulled by this piston mechanism link it is in sequence with the piston movement so as the piston keeps moving up and down the mechanical link from the piston is also pulling the cord in same sequence in other words the drum is rotating in sequence with the piston movement all right so the piston movement speed is exactly the rotary speed and sequence of the piston so there are two parameters here one is the gas pressure acting on the system and is the movement of the drum in sequence with the piston movement now when i press the scriber against the drum while the drum is rotating i will get exactly what is the pressure condition during the entire stroke okay so the compression pressure will show up to the compression level the peak pressure will show up to the compression level the exhaust pressure will also show to the exhaust level so all these diagrams can be seen on the drum on which the paper is fitted actually it will be seen on the paper this paper is a very special paper it is not like any ordinary paper and the paper is such it's a little thick paper it is uh, a little thicker than your normal a4 it is as thick as your check the check paper check book paper exactly the same thickness only difference is it has a coating on top it is a white absolutely white coating and this coating is such that if a scriber runs over it it will make a mark it will draw it will not cut the paper but only the coating will be removed to reveal a thin mark and if the pointer at the stylus is very thin the mark will also be very thin it is required to be thin to get a very neat diagram from where measurements can be made so once the diagram is drawn you can assess the performance of the engine the faults within the engine so there are different diagrams that can be drawn one is what i showed you that the cord is attached to the piston link mechanism so you can get a power card from there another one is where the chief engineer will pull the cord by his hand in sequence to the timing of the movement of the stylus that is another card that can be drawn so these are the different cards that can be drawn with this instrument initially we need to understand what is this instrument and how it works i hope you have some fair idea of how this instrument works and what how it is constructed you see this part this black strip over here is knurled surface it is capable of rotating if it rotates it enables that entire housing assembly for the linkages to also rotate and if this entire housing rotates it means you can take the scriber off from the drum and again press it against the drum 
so that is what this part is entitled you are supposed to use your thumb and finger to rotate that part of the instrument which enables the stylus to be lifted off the drum and again pressed against the drum the pressure against the drum must be very gentle and the pressure must be only momentary because the string is going to move reasonably fast the scriber but one movement you are supposed to have it only one time pressed against the scar same the rotation of the drum will continue rotation of the drum is not so much of a problem what is the problem is keeping the indicator cock open for a prolonged time you cannot afford to do that to open the indicator cock press the stylus take off the stylus again close the indicator cock the drum can keep rotating there is no heating there is no damage done if you keep pulling the cord and rotating it against the spring force but if you keep the indicator cock open for a prolonged time the whole instrument gets very very hot if it gets very hot you can't touch it and if you can't touch it you can't remove it then you are in a deep trouble gloves are used but if you use gloves it is a little clumsy handling this delicate instrument with gloves it's a little diff difficult so what we used to do use gloves only for one hand and the other hand we could use the finer objectives so closing and opening the indicator cock was done with one hand holding the instrument because it is hot was done in the gloved hand so once a diagram is taken we remove the indicator instrument and allow it to cool under the blowers inside the engine room so once it cools we go on to the next one all right now to get uh, okay now let's have, i'll show you the other diagram which show you the internal part of the indicator instrument so that should be no not this this is a power cord yeah now this is a diagram which we show you what it is like inside uh, it should be reasonably clear okay i hope you fellows can see it pratham is the diagram clear now pratham uh, please enlarge it a little from the bottom left corner okay okay here it is little more i think it is reasonably clear because the diagram i have made to make it explanatory what you saw before this was the outside view now what i have shown you is more or less a sectional view now let's look at the instrument over here this is that nut which is fitted onto the indicator cock and what you see on the inside of the nut are the threads so the threads are used to attach it to the indicator cock the gas pressure which acts acts on this piston and this piston has got some two maybe three piston rings and it is working against the spring in the outside diagram you saw the spring way on top i have it ultimately it is the same it is working against the spring force so every time the gas pressure acts against the piston the whole piston moves upwards because it is pressed by the gas but the return force is by the spring so as it moves this is attached to a linkage this linkage is a very special linkage and it enables the movement of the stylus end in only a vertical direction not in the form of an arc i have simplified the linkage arrangement so that you can also draw it if required but remember this linkage is intent intended to ensure that the stylus movement at the tip is absolutely vertical so it is a very special linkage and that stylus has a point at the end and this point scratches a mark on the paper which is fitted onto the drum at the lower left hand side is the process how the paper is fitted onto the drum see the paper is folded with the ends with little corners and these two paper are fitted past into that spring clip if you just see the spring clip on the drum there are two steel clips they have a little bit of a spring tension so this is what the spring clip is about and for the ends of the paper are held in the clip and you pull by putting holding these two with your fingers and pull it apart you cannot afford to touch the surface of this paper because your hands are not exactly dry they may be slightly oily in the engine room so if you touch this surface 
it will get a patch. And once you get a patch on the paper, your diagram will come out to be very untidy. So once it is fitted inside, you can touch only this corner paper uh, or the ends of the paper to pull the paper tight against the drum. And the drum, it has got a wheel at the bottom and that wheel has got a cord around it and the cord passes over a pulley. And this pulley arrangement can be changed by its position by opening this butterfly nut and loosening this plate which supports the pulley against the main plate. All right. So once you tighten the butterfly nut, the pulley is fixed in a desired position. And that desired position aligns the cord with the piston rod link mechanism here at the bottom. On board the ship, we it takes a little time to get the length of the cord adjusted so that it matches the movement of the drum completely with the stroke of the mechanical link over here. So how much the link moves downwards and upward, that length should be equal to the rotary position, one circle of the drum. It should not be half the drum movement or three quarters of the drum movement. It should be almost from one end to the other, almost. Because you see, the diagram which comes on the paper has to be within the jurisdiction of the limits of the paper. You cannot have the diagram outside the paper pr uh, premises, that means the boundaries. So that length of the cord will decide how much the rotation of the drum will occur. On board the ship, once that is finalized, what we do is tie a knot or a loop at the end of the cord and make it a permanent. So when we keep back the instrument, that loop remains. So next time when we do it, we simply have to pass that loop onto that L hook that is there on the piston mechanism. So once it is hooked, we know the drum is going to rotate to the required angle of rotation. It will not tear the cord because it is short and it will not remain loose at the end of the stroke. So this part is very essential. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what else? So once the cord is fitted and the card is in position and the stylus is pressed in position, I have made a handle over here which helps to rotate the assembly of the scriber or the stylus. So the stylus can be taken off the drum and it can be put back against the drum as desired by moving this part of the handle. So this handle enables only the stylus system to move. Of course, it is not a perfect diagram, but it is good enough for an explanation. So on the diagram, what you see is the mark made out by the stylus for one stroke only. So it starts from here and you see the bottom line is the compression line. It keeps compressing till it reaches your TDC and then beyond TDC, the firing continues and the expansion starts. So as the line expands, it comes to a position where the exhaust valve or ports open. Then there is a sudden drop in pressure down to the atmospheric line. Now, one point I have not mentioned, but I am mentioning now. Before you start, in other words, after the card is put in position and the instrument is still in your hand, that means you have not fitted it onto the indicator box, it is best to draw the atmospheric line. How is the atmospheric line drawn? The atmospheric line is at the bottom of the diagram here. And it is drawn with the stylus pressed in place and the cord pulled once, just once by hand. So you will get a complete horizontal line, which is the atmospheric line. Why is it called atmospheric line? Because the pressure on this piston is at atmospheric pressure and the position of the stylus is at atmospheric pressure. So any pressure acting on the piston above atmospheric will give a different level of the line on the card. So if by chance your indicator cock is leaking, then after you fit it and then try to draw the atmospheric line, that atmospheric line will be much more than the normal line. I guess everybody understands what I'm talking about. So it is essential to draw the atmospheric line before you install the instrument onto the indicator cock. Any questions? I hope you all are understanding. 
because such this explanation is not there in the books why is it coming like this i want to make it smaller yeah see instrument in use card mounting on drum movement of the scriber see this movement of the scriber is shown here it is vertical but the card movement is rotary in other words horizontal so this vertical movement of the stylus and horizontal movement of the card produces a diagram like this and this diagram is produced with the varying gas pressure and sequential piston movement varying gas pressure on top of the piston and sequential that means in line synchronous movement of the piston so it will produce a diagram like this this card is called the power card the card which is used to calculate the power so this is what you have here oh that's gone okay let me go back again don't save okay so this is the instrument used for the internal combustion engine this one is used for the um triple expansion steam engine now there could be many springs that come about depending on but for one engine you need only one spring and for another card another system of cards you need a soft spring that is your light spring diagram but generally one spring is enough they give you two or three springs and along with the spring you get a scale that scale is used to measure the diagram and that scale matches with or corresponds with the spring that is in use let's read up on what it is said i have tried to explain to you the become cold okay so i have tried to explain i've been asked in the chat section sorry sorry please repeat that questions uh, are been asked in this chat section i can understand you write it on the check where this thing is coming yes. oh wait a minute. oh there's a question okay 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 kartik keshari has asked sir as this is also used to check the whether there is any water in the combustion phase hey man where do you get water from <laughs> no you don't check if there is water in this this is not used to check water in the combustion phase no 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 uh, that is a different area now don't confuse indicator card diagrams and water coming into the combustion phase doesn't come in and now if i start the whole subject topic will go elsewhere acha there is no water measurement by this indicator card instrument no sir but this is in only... last semester in some class you told that this device is also used to check whether there is any water in combustion space like when we move it manually then water oh, comes you are making a mistake with indicator card instrument and indicator cock indicator cock is a valve which is fitted on the cylinder head of the engine all right this indicator instrument is fitted on the indicator cock okay now when the instrument is not there the indicator cock is always there with the engine it is part of the mounting of the engine you open the indicator cock and turn the engine on turning gear and the piston will move very slowly so if at all there is any water inside the engine it will be pushing itself out from the indicator cock so that is why you check whether there is any water inside the engine by means of keeping the indicator cock or indicator valve which is on the cylinder cover of the engine to see if there is any water indicator instrument does not check indicator instrument is used to be fitted onto the indicator cock and then you have means of measuring the power the indicator instrument is kept in the chief engineer's cabin it is an it's an instrument like a vernier caliper or micrometer or thing like that it is not fitted on the engine all the time the indicator cock is there all the time because it is part of the mounting like your air starting valve exhaust valve relief valve indicator cock these are all the mountings okay kartik 
Do you get it? Yes, sir. Okay. Never mind. Good. You asked and got it cleared. Do not let these doubts linger. Okay. Rahul Kumar has a question, sir. Sir, is it kept fixed from the indicator of OV rumor? Oh, my. Rahul, this is a very delicate instrument. It has to be kept only in the chief engineer's cabin. In his cabin, he has a drawer where all the important instruments are kept. And um, it is kept, it is cleaned, it is lubricated, it has to be kept. It's like a jewelry, jewelry box. It comes in a jewelry box. You know, everybody has seen a jewelry box. It has got that felt lining inside and is kept in the sort of a stand. And inside that box, you will have a little spanner, you will have a set of cards in a booklet form. But then booklet card that is consumed. So you get fresh card. Then you have a little can of lubricating oil. That piston inside has to be lubricated. Then you have a little brush, a bottle brush. So that brush is used to clean the inside of that little instrument. So it is quite an important, delicate instrument and it is not kept fitted on the engine all the time. One instrument is used for all the units of the engine. All right, Rahul. I hope that should make it clear. So is it kept fixed on the indicator cock or we remove it and taking it power? Yes, you remove it. You remove it every time. Is It is done, you know, it depends. If the comp actually once a month, we have to do it. Beyond that, if you want to continuously monitor the engine, it is the chief engineer's prerogative. He wants to take it every week, he can take it. But once a month, we have to take the cards and ultimately send the cards to office. That time, there was no scanner, there was no printer. We used to send it. The chief engineer had a lot of papers being sent to the office. So each month, entire report on the engine needs to be put in an envelope and sent to the office. The superintendent in, over there checks it out. But now, everything is completely different. Your sensors on the engine have direct transmission to the office. So the chief engineer, so the superintendent in the office can sit on his laptop and see what is the performance of the engine on this ship, what is the performance of that ship, what is on the refund in a ship in Vietnam, what is the performance of a ship in Rotterdam, anywhere. So modern techniques have removed a lot of paperwork. Rithik has got a question, sir. How the scriber is calibrated to register the pressure that might be low to overcome the spring force. Wait a minute. How the scriber is calibrated? Scriber is not calibrated. It is the spring which determines the amount, how much it can go up. That's all. And there will be an end position. No matter how heavy the pressure is, there will be a stopper at which the scriber will go up. To. That's all. And these springs decide on the pressure that can be accommodated inside that little piston. The area is very small of that piston. So the movement of the piston is hardly one centimeter. It is capable of one and a half centimeter movement. But after one centimeter, it is the maximum pressure that is being exerted on the piston. So that is the maximum movement by the piston. And this is opposed by that spring. And the spring can even allow further expansion. The spring may be a compression spring or it may be a tensile spring. In the instrument that we saw, this is the tensile spring because the tension of the spring is what keeping it. In the diagram that I showed you, that had a compression spring. So it can be anything, but ultimately it is the spring that limits the movement of the scriber. Okay. Pratham, sir, how do we know the curve generated is a desirable one? I think experience, I think experience, but curve is a desirable one. Hmm. How do you desire a curve? Okay. It should represent a standard power card and a draw card. We are coming to it. There are four different cards. Basically, the first one that you got a glimpse of is the power card. That is the card where we calculate the power from. The next is the draw card. The draw card is the chief engineer pulls the cord with his hand and at the same time presses the stylus onto the drum. It requires a little practice. This is the part that requires a little practice and experience. 
and the card, whether it is desirable or not, well, you will see most of the cards explained to you. And then when you actually take the card, you will realize that this does not look like the card that has been shown to me. So it is not desirable. So I suppose experience will be a little requirement here. Okay, let's move on. Why indicator cards are required to be taken? Why do we need to take them? Let's see. To calculate the indicated power. That means the power inside the cylinder. And that is indicated power, not brake power. Brake power is the one that is available at the flywheel. So it is not taking into consideration the resistances within the engine. So it is the power being developed inside the cylinder. So that is why it is called indicated power. To determine peak pressure and compression pressure. So you need to know whether the peak pressure is satisfactory or not. So you see these cards and it will indicate to you what is the peak pressure. You can't have a pressure gauge mounted on a cylinder to find what is the peak pressure. You cannot do that. The pressure is somewhere in the region of 120 bar. Well, the pressure keeps varying. So if you fit a pressure gauge there, within five minutes, that pressure gauge will collapse, will finish off. You cannot have that level of pressure dropping from 120 bar, 0, 120 bar, 0, 120 bar. That will not last. It will break. Okay. Second factor is to determine the compression pressure. This compression pressure is an important parameter because that is the pressure which is measured with the fuel cutoff. When you cut off the fuel, there is going to be no combustion. So there's not going to be no combustion pressure. But the piston with the piston rings is going to develop pressure inside the cylinder. And that level of pressure is very critical. That will decide how much heat generation is there, whether your uh, ignition temperature is being reached, things like that. Now, if your piston rings are not satisfactory, the compression pressure will be low. If the gasket on the cylinder cover is leaking, again, the pressure will be low. So ultimately, this compression pressure is checked to check the integrity of the combustion spaces. That means whether the air trapped inside is actually trapped or it is leaking from the relief valve, leaking from the air starting valve, leaking from the exhaust valve, leaking from the indicator cock or leaking from the gasket or leaking from the park piston rings. So it could be leaking out from so many places. And if it is leaking out, means your combustion efficiency is going to be dropped. All right. So this compression pressure is also very important to a parameter to be found out. Number three, to evaluate the combustion inside the process of combustion inside the cylinder. In other words, it means you are saying whether the fuel injection is at the right place, whether the rate of rise of the pressure in the injection is correct or not. So these are the combustion processes which are found out. And the fourth important one is how I skipped a joint. Which plate is this? Sorry. Yeah, okay. We've done this one. Okay. Then we done the other one. That's the third one. Yeah. So third one, a uh, fourth one is to evaluate the scavenge and exhaust breathing condition. I think at the very beginning of our class, I told you how well an engine performs is will decide sorry how well an engine performs is dependent on how well it can breathe you take in air well take out air you can run but if you have restricted air intake you cannot run you cannot perform you cannot do anything same thing with the engines if you do not provide satisfactory quantity of air no matter how good your fuel is no matter how good your engine is it cannot perform it will not perform, it will not develop power. So we need to check how well the engine is breathing. So that also can be determined by the use of this indicator card instrument. And the instrument is used to find a card which will show you the breathing characteristics. That is through a light spring diagram. Now, indicator card is one way of determining the performance of the engine as well as some of the drawbacks or malfunctioning parts of the engine. Okay. Other than this, I have introduced modern and other engine performance methods. 
these are probably what you will see by the time you go on some of the modern ships especially ships if you are told are coming out from the shipyard from the builders shipyard they will be very very modern and they will have very modern electronic devices that's why i keep harping upon you guys to be very thorough in your electrical machines in your electronics these two areas have to be covered very very thoroughly you need your strong points to be on electrical technology because now marine engineers just being marine engineers is not enough you have to be a marine engineer you have to be a mechanical engineer you have to be a naval architect you have to be electronics engineer and you have to be a electrical engineer combine and you have to be good in all you have to be a master in all in fact not just good good is not good enough you have to be a master in all then only you will get recognition by the chief engineer and the chief engineer will put his word to the superintendent superintendent will put his word to the fleet manager and the fleet manager will say all right i want that boy to get promoted ultimately it comes from the chief engineer if chief engineer says you are good everything will be following in line so keep the chief engineer in very good relationship with your performance not being any or not any other way so your performance will depend on your knowledge on marine electrical electronics all so here are some of the methods currently used i have made them as short as possible otherwise the powerpoint program will become endless so first one i have said is a digital pressure monitoring system a digital pressure indicator is an electronic mode to monitor the power and performance of the engine now this monitor is not only monitoring it can also transfer wi wifi to your computer inside the control room so the readouts are direct on the computer and the recording is also a means of having it in a formal file in other words you don't do anything except fit it up and press the buttons and you will have a little window to show you the cards being formed whereas in the main computer the recording will be done these use what are called piezoelectric systems piezoelectric systems are basically crystals and these crystals if you compress they develop an electromotive force on either end and the simplest example is the one in your kitchen in your home you go after this class you go and check it out that lighter that you have for your gas cylinder gas cooking gas when you squeeze it it squeezes gently and then there's a click sound and that click sound is the point at which the electromotive force between the two terminals has exceeded 80 millivolts and that 80 millivolts is what generates the spark and that spark is what ignites the gas so after class you go and check out how it works and you see the spark coming out so inside that they will have some crystals crystals may be quartz crystals may be tourmaline crystals so these are called piezo electric systems and same system is used in lot of places lot of places inside the engine room so these are those modern gadgets and most of them use these crystals of course each system will be using a different type of crystal because the level of that electromotive force which is generated will be different and those differences will be dependent on what the requirements are that is one number two intelligent combustion monitoring this is also similar the new generation engines are commonly monitored by icm which measures the real time in cylinder pressures in all cylinders that means these are pressure monitors which are continuously monitoring that means it is continuously being sent to your computer inside the control room of the engine and the parameters are already fed in suppose 120 bar is the pressure coming from your cylinder and you have given it a a, a bandwidth of 115 to 125 so the pressure coming in is 120 is within the limits no alarms no information to you is required and engine is running smoothly if it drops to below 115 immediately alarm will come these are real time measuring and monitoring techniques which are used on board a lot of ships so all you need to do is be aware in the control room that 
everything is running satisfactorily since there are no alarms coming. But that does not give you reason to be complacent. Sometimes these devices don't work. And if they don't work, you are required to rectify them. There is no electrical te technician on board. The marine engineer is me. So make yourself very thorough with these electronic devices. In most instances, if it doesn't work, you simply replace it. You are not expected to open it and shoulder the connections or change the transistor or part from inside the device. You need to simply change the card and put it on the card. Most of them have motherboards. And within these motherboards, each item, let us say number six unit, intern, intelligent combustion monitoring, it will have a motherboard. And then you find some, uh, you check the pressure manually, you find it is perfectly 120. But in the motherboard, it is showing 110. So you know something is wrong with the motherboard. So you remove that motherboard, put a fresh motherboard, and everything is fine. That will be your limits to doing any work. Unless you are very interested to find out what is wrong inside that motherboard. Everybody knows what is the motherboard. Some transistor, some filter, some transformer may be incorrect or gone. So that I don't think we will be expected to repair. But uh, these things happen very rarely. So one is your digital pressure monitoring, one is your internal combustion monitoring. ICM monitoring is a continuous real-time process. It is continuously monitoring. So you don't need to take any card. So this is one way of actually finding out engine performance records on a continuous basis. Apart from this, you have monitoring of engine control parameters. The engine control parameters like fuel injection timing, exhaust wire timing, variable turbocharger, vane operating angles, lambda control, etc., are monitored. And any variation is set to achieve the best possible efficient combustion. So these are separately monitored, like fuel injection timing. They will also have the timings via sensor put onto the uh, fuel pipe itself, which is coming from the fuel pump to the injector. So the pulse emanating from there and the sensor coming from the flywheel to sense the timing, these will coordinate to give you the angle and the correct position of fuel injection. Correct? Right? So that is fuel injection timing. Similarly, exhaust valve timing. When it opens, when it the, I, I think I, we've learned about exhaust valve, how it operates. That hydraulic pressure which operates the exhaust valve will be monitored with the timing of the engine. So that timing and the pressure has to coordinate to give the correct instant of opening and closing of the exhaust valve. Now, variable turbocharger vane opening angles is another area that has come about with particularly four-stroke engines, I don't know about two-stroke engines, but four-stroke engines definitely, it is called variable geometry turbocharging. Variable geometry turbocharging is used to improve the performance of the engine even at part load conditions. I have told you in the part load conditions, the turbocharger is not capable of providing adequate air to the engine. So what they have done, the nozzles, or rather the nozzle veins, which the number of veins along the ring, which allow the gas to proceed to the turbine wheel, which has got the blades. These veins can be altered in their positions. Why? Because the at part load condition, the quantum of gas coming is not of much speed. So the gas entering the turbine blades is not enough to give the rotary movement of the turbine. So these nozzle blades which are there, they can be made to change their cross-sectional area at the point where the gas is released to the turbine blades. And all these blades on that nozzle ring are connected through a linkage. And this linkage is varied to change the opening and closing of these nozzles, which allow the gas to flow onto the turbine blades. So that is called variable geometry turbocharging or VGT. 
This is used particularly in part load conditions to get a boost in the rotation of the turbine to enable more air to come into the engine. So this is called turbocharger vane opening angles. In other words, it is VGT. I think I should put in over here VGT in bracket to make it a little simpler. VGT. Okay. Variable geometry turbocharging. I will not go more in depth. If you are interested, you can check out. There's a lot of literature on variable geometry turbocharging in the modern engines. Lambda control. Lambda control is another area which I will describe very briefly. You see, whenever there is a change in load, suppose your ship is moving steadily and there is a change in current. If there is a change in current, there will be a sudden change in the load on the propellers. So that propeller will load will ultimately be transferred to the engine. And suppose the current is such, it was for you in some distance and suddenly it becomes against you. Then the load on the propeller will increase. So the propeller, the engine speed will drop. Moment you increase the load on the propeller, it means you're increasing the load on the engine. So the engine a, RPM will drop marginally. So the governor realized that the engine speed has dropped and it will give a little more fuel. But that instantaneous fuel that is given is not completely burnt. So means are made to give the fuel in the correct mode so that there is no puff of momentary smoke also. So this control to give the correct amount of fuel during momentary changes in load uh, is what lambda control is about. I don't have the full literature of the electronics part of the control, but these are also electronically controlled to fine tune the governor movements. Right now, it is lambda control to give fine tuning to engine load variation. Okay, it is uh, definitely there in the very modern engines. Uh, where is it? Lambda control are monitored and any variation is set to achieve the best is the best possible efficient best possible efficient combustion. See, ultimately the focus is on getting that fuel to burn completely. Moment you don't burn that completely means you are wasting money. So all these technical devices, all these monitoring devices are intended to ensure that fuel is complete burnt. In other words, the money you pay to buy the fuel, make sure that money is giving you its worth. Okay, Mrityunjoy has got a question. Uh, Manohar saying lambda control is a means where fine tuning of change in fuel to the engine. When the governor is giving fuel to the engine, it is matched with the air that is supplied. All right. So momentarily, when there is a change in the load, the governor tends to give a little more fuel. Suppose it gives, because the load has increased, RPM has dropped, it gives more fuel. But that more fuel requires more air. All right. So that momentary period where excess fuel is given will cause excess smoke, puff of smoke. That control is provided through lambda control. Okay. Next is Mitsunjay Kumar Rana. So can we use a camera inside the cylinder so that by study of condition of the flame determine desired parameters same as we do in Bala. Very good. Mitsunjay. Yes, it is already done. It is not can we do it. It is already done. There are means by which cameras are fitting to study the flame color, flame intensity, just as your boiler. Yes, it is done. It is not but not common. It is not very common. I mean, a very ultra modern engine will possibly have it. Passenger ships may have it. But I have not heard it being done on commercial ships. But yes, for research purposes, it is definitely done. You see, the flame has different zones. Similarly, the combustion inside the cylinder, it has different zones of combustion. Intensive zone, partial zone, partial so different zones are studied and every effort is made to improve the complete combustion zone. Yes, it is there. 
cameras are there. But apart from research, I'm not too sure if it is there on normal operating engines. For research, yes, they have these on the engines. Okay. Let's move on. So next is logbook monitoring. Logbook monitoring is another very, very reliable means. This is the most basic but commonly ignored method for monitoring engine performance. This one is the most authentic. You see, the logbook is a book inside your engine room. And this book records all parameters every watch. In other words, there are about 200, maybe 250 parameters which have to be filled in during the watch. All the exhaust gas temperatures, what is the sea water temperature, what is the cooling water temperature, what is the RPM, what is the fuel consumption, what is the cylinder oil tank, what is the lube oil tank level, everything. All these have to be recorded every four hours because your watch is for four hours. Now, this goes on day after day after day. Every day is a new page. And both sides of that book consist of, it's a, quite a book. It's about, I'll say, uh, how much? Almost one meter. One meter in length when it is opened up. And about 40 centimeters, 30, yeah, 40 centimeters in height. So if you see, it is about 50 centimeters by 40 centimeters booklet. Every month you have that logbook and that is the engine room logbook. And in that logbook, there are about 30 pages, 31 pages. So, of course, a little more pages will be there giving you instructions and all. You are required to fill in the data for every parameter in your watch. Everything is watch-wise, every four hours. So if, and you have to sign at the end of the watch. So anything goes wrong in your watch, you will be held accountable. So it is like a written data log. And that helps in monitoring the performance of the engine. What happened 20 days before, you see what is the temperature and what you see it today. Why is there such a big difference? So that is the means of identifying the past performance to guess the exist reasons for its existing performance on a particular day. So the logbook is a very important device to monitor the performance of the engine over a period of time. Next one is engine emission. The marine engine releases exhaust smoke as waste product after the combustion. Everybody knows from the funnel you get the exhaust gases. The color and nature of the exhaust should be monitored. In other words, before you go down to the engine room for a watch, you look at the funnel and you see if there is any smoke coming out. And sure enough, that smoke will be indicative of the condition within the engine. If it is smoky, see, I've had this smoky experience four or five times during my career. And most of them were because of fuel injectors. Fuel injectors, after some time, they get worn out. And the quantity of the fuel they deliver is more than what is required because the holes, the nozzle holes become very big and the quality of atomization, penetration becomes very upset. So the combustion process is not satisfactory. And in the process, the exhaust temperature will drop. Remember, the fuel, if it is not delivered correctly, if it doesn't burn, obviously there will be no heat generation. If there is no heat generation, exhaust temperature will not rise. It will drop. So unburned fuel continues to go up. And from the funnel, you'll find gray smoke. It's not really black. If a small problem is there, it will be a gray smoke, not colorless. So immediately, you know what is wrong. And the first thing that you look to is the exhaust gas temperatures from individual units. And sure enough, the one that injector is not performing well will have a temperature which is lower than the other temperatures. So the power balancing of the engine is upset. So then why logbook monitoring is ignored? Because, you see, uh, a, lot of boys, a lot of people think that having electronic devices is a very good means. And what they record, that is final. But logbook is very, very important. Ignored, this is up to the individual engineers, individual engineers. One of the reasons is 
lot of watch keepers do not put down the actual temperatures what is there they will put what is the previous temperature i am telling you this this is what happens sometimes you get an engineer who is a little lazy he doesn't want to go around taking all the temperature so if he sees what is the previous temperature he also puts that temperature so then you are not doing something that is right and it is sometimes ignored because of that you get it so you have to be a little sincere that is why during interviews they check upon your attitude your sincerity your honesty these are also parameters that come along for an engineer so when you go to take over a watch best is to first check the parameters and then check the lock book and then you notice over there hey you have said the lube oil level in the tank is 40 cm but i checked it was only 30 cm how you have put 40 cm that means that the loss in oil for 10 cm you are putting it on to my account that is not right so that is why the log book is sometimes ignored okay so you have to be a little careful and these are ropes which you will learn in time when you are on board the ship so be very very honest with yourself and there will be no problems when somebody does things like that then the whole engine room staff suffer okay uh, what was it as ah, yes okay mitun joy i hope you understand rana it is definitely done to measure the flame inside that next is engine emission yeah i spoke about that the change in exhaust smoke is a prominent indication of a problem in the combustion chamber not only combustion chamber it is also some equipment it might be your exhaust valve is leaking it might be your injector is not working satisfactorily it may be the fuel quality is very poor there are so many parameters it may be your piston rings are leaking so all these several reasons are there to cause poor combustion in the combustion chamber and thereby give you a poor quality of the exhaust the exhaust gases may have a color which is black white yellow blue brown and these colors are diagnostic color in other words the colors will indicate to you what the problem is all right i hope e, i am not going to go into this you will know what is the reason for black what is the reason for white what is the reason for the other colors also so this is something you will need to know on your own i am not going into it because i think i have already been through it so here is the diagram which is a little easier on the eye and easier to follow now here the spring is located right on top it is a calibrated spring the spring which is appropriate for the pressures built up for this particular engine so the spring is what opposes the piston movement against the gas pressure and that uh, piston rod is also communicated to the linkage mechanism linkage to provide straight line movement of stylus yeah that is i never read this until today okay the stylus movement will be absolutely vertical because this will also be moving up and down all right and that helps to get a straight line the straight line if it is taken it will indicate only the pressure the pressure inside the combustion chamber when the combustion takes place just a moment please okay never mind this part of the diagram it's, it's too black to be identifiable what is happening here keep a focus on this so this is the drum this is of the two clips which hold the paper in place and this is the wheel around which the cord is wrapped and this is the pulley over which the cord is pulled and the indicator cord is pulled downwards so i think this diagram is reasonably easier to follow than the photograph that is saw okay okay description now here i have made it in case you did not follow what i said i have got it in writing let's read it through it is made up of a small piston of known size that means the diameter is a calculated diameter which operates in a cylinder against a specially calibrated spring a magnifying linkage that means magnifying linkage means the linkage moves end moves much more than the piston with stylus transfers the piston movement to a drum 
on which is mounted a piece of paper or card. The drum oscillates, moves backwards or forward, moves, it rotates. How can it move, moves backwards? It rotates. R O T A T E S rotates backwards and forwards also doesn't make sense. But it rotates to and fro under the pull of the cord. Okay, let's save this. The drum rotates backwards and forwards under the pull of the cord. I think everybody understands that. The cord is moved by a piston link rod for power card. Only for the power card, that piston link rod has to be looped with the cord from the drum for the other card like the draw card you don't need and for the compression card also you need for the draw card you don't need to use the piston link card okay so similarly a power card and compression card compression card will also require i will not write anything here because there are three cards that have to be connected okay leave it at that a line diagram is etched when the stylus is pressed against the paper held on the drum. This is the atmospheric line. That the line will indicate the atmosphere level. And it must be drawn with the instrument in your hand, not with the instrument fitted on the indicator cock. Karthik, are you with me? The indicator instrument has to be in your hand when you're drawing the atmospheric line. A lot of books will tell you fit it up on the indicator cock and then draw the atmospheric line. I have faced this issue and I've got incorrect readings because a minute leak at the indicator cock which you cannot see, cannot feel, cannot show, will change the pressure on top of the piston and thereby change the position of the stylus and thereby when you draw a horizontal line, that line will not be a true atmospheric line. So that is why you need to draw the atmospheric line when actual atmosphere is against that little piston inside. And then you draw the car line. Ravi Prakash, sir, the spring stiffness constant designs the scale of the... Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Correct, Ravi? Good thinking. You're right. The scale and the spring, they must match. Okay, let's move on. The stylus draws out an indicator diagram which represents the gas pressure on the engine piston at different points of the stroke. So the gas pressure on the main piston inside the engine is varying. It is not a constant pressure. So the stylus will also move at a different level. Uh, and the area of the indicator diagram produced represents the power developed in the particular cylinder. I gave you the diagram sometime. Oh no, not this. Let's finish reading this, then we'll go to that diagram. And I'll show you many more on the card. The drum oscillates, a bar rotate, rotates backwards and forwards under the pull of the cord. The cord is moved by a piston link rod. I'm repeating this. A line diagram is etched when the stylus is pressed against the paper held on the drum. Ravi's got a question. Sir, if I don't have the specific spring with given constant, how do we recalculate the actual scale for that situation? Ravi, you can throw that instrument overboard if you don't have the spring. The spring and the scale are essential parts of that instrument. If you don't have it, the whole instrument is useless. You can't do anything about it. Okay, so very, that is why it is kept very carefully like a jewelry box in the chief engineer's cabin. It is not <coughs> left in the engine room anywhere. You will have that specific spring and the spring is fitted inside that indicator card instrument and it is not removed because that spring is intended for that particular main engine. Okay, Ravi, there is no excuse there is to um, have a part missing from that indicator in card instrument. That instrument comes as a complete unit 
in a box, like a jewelry box. I think everybody knows what is a jewelry box. Never mind anybody else. But you fellows will have to. I think same thing is the inside micrometer, which is used for measuring the cylinder liner. That is also a very precious instrument and it also comes in a jewelry box. And there are several parts to it. If one part is missing, the whole instrument is useless. So make sure you keep these things well. Can't we modify the scale after replacing the spring? See, you spend most of your time modification instead of actually taking the pressure cards and calculating the power of the engine. You can't. That scale is a little wooden scale. It is about four inches long. And they are directly read off as bars. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 120 bar. So moment you put that scale against the diagram, you will get the value of the pressure inside the cylinder. So that scale is not in millimeters or inches. It is a separate scale of its own. It is not that so many millimeters make so many bar. It, it will not be given, not be given like that. So you directly read the pressure from the card. The height of the card will be indicative of the combustion pressure. And then the height of the compression pressure can be derived from the draw card. Okay. So uh, a line diagram is etched when the stylus is pressed against the paper held on the drum. Okay. So paper is there, stylus is pressed, cord is pulled. I think you need three, four hands for that. But sometimes you'll have to be a little adept, adept at handling that instrument while pressing the stylus, not too hard, gently, and pulling the cord. And then you remove the stylus from the surface. So you need to get one line. If you press excessively, then you will get a very thick line. And that will leave error. Whom to report about any abnormalities if I find any? Chief engineer officer who will be next to me on watch or on bridge. Chief engineer doesn't keep regular watch. Chief engineer is on 24 hours duty. He can be called middle of the night, daytime, anytime. So he doesn't keep watch. Normally, second engineer, third engineer, and fourth engineer. With fourth engineer, you'll have a fifth engineer. With third engineer, you have a fitter. And one second engineer will have another fifth engineer. Normally, two fifth engineers are there on board. But sometimes, you know, times are changing. They have reduced the number of personnel. Second engineer and one fifth engineer. The senior fifth engineer goes with second engineer. Third engineer keeps watch with the fitter. Fourth engineer and the junior fifth engineer keep watch together. Actually, sometimes... Four, Fourth engineer's watch is considered as chief engineer's watch. That is why the junior most engine cadet is tagged along with the fourth engineer's uh, watch keeping. What does this come from now? How do I get rid of this? Yeah. So that is the way. The chief engineer's watch is not a formal watch in the sense that he does not have to stay in the engine room. But his time of coming to the engine room is usually from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Okay. So, it depends on who is on watch. You report to the senior engineer. Senior engineer find it necessary. He will report to the chief engineer. If he can rectify any abnormality within his scope, he will rectify. Otherwise, you as a junior engineer are required to inform the immediate senior who is with you. You are not supposed to go directly to chief engineer bypassing your immediate superior. Never do that. You will draw blood. You will, you will, you will create animosities within the ship, which is very, very risky and undesirable. Always put it up to the immediate senior. That means if you are fifth engineer, put it to the fourth engineer, and then you are free. Now it is up to the fourth engineer whether he wants to inform to the chief or the second or anybody. If he doesn't, you are off from any responsibility. Who is on your watch? 
not on the bridge. You do not talk to bridge unless it is absolutely necessary because they are doing their work. You immediately report to the immediate senior who is with you. And then they proceed. Be careful. This has got a lot of sensitivities, your ranks in the engine room. You have to keep to your rank. In other words, if you're fifth engineer and you're directly reporting everything to chief engineer, then the fourth, third, second, they will be giving you a lot of trouble. So avoid that and keep your immediate senior informed in whatever you see, do, happens in the engine room. Okay. Uh, where are we? The stylus draws out an indicator diagram which represents the gas pressure on the engine piston at different points of the stroke. And the area of the indicator diagram represents the power developed in a particular cylinder. The cylinder power can be measured if the scaling factors, spring calibration, and some basic engine details are known. RPM, mainly RPM, are uh, known. The cylinder power values are compared, and for a balanced loading, should all be the same. So once you get the power of a unit and the other units, you need to check whether all the units are performing more or less the same. It is next to impossible to get 100% balance with all the units. Okay, one will give, say, 90, uh, let us say 90%. One will give 91%, one will give 89%, one will give 92%. So all within 1-2%, maximum 1.5% differences between each. You see, why is that? Sometimes we question ourselves. If you are giving more power, more fuel to an engine, it is burning well, but still it is producing less power. A lot depends on the internal resistances. Internal resistances, that means the resistances of the piston inside the liner, the resistance of the bottom end bearing. These things are contributing to some of the resistance to the power that is being built. Or you can say the injector of one is not really giving it the quality of fuel distribution. The compression pressure is not exactly what it should be. One might be 100 and uh, one might be 45 bar, one might be 46 bar, one might be 44 bar. So these compression pressures also determine how much power is the ultimate result. So there will be a little variation of the units, but that is within a certain bandwidth so, and it is acceptable. The cylinder power can be measured. Okay. The cylinder power values are compared and for balance loading should all be the same. Adjustments may then be made to the fuel supply in order to balance the cylinder loads. Now here, you may require to adjust those Bosch fuel pump, fuel racks, give a little bit more, maybe one notch more or one notch less to try and get a balance of powers from each of those cylinders. So these are like fine tuning the engine to ensure even power from all the units. Okay. Next is, this is the important page. The instrument can give four useful types of diagrams to show four different conditions within the engine. Remember, there are four useful types. There is one more which I don't find useful at all. It is there only in the theoretical books and we have no real use of it. Maybe in the builder's workshop or somewhere they will have some real usefulness. But whether it is for sea trials, whether it is for engine manufacturers' trials, it has no relevance. The fifth one. So the first one that we have is the power card. It is also called indicator card. That is the card by where the power is calculated from the diagram. The second one is called the draw card. The draw card is termed as out-of-phase diagram. Now, this is something which is, requires a little bit of imagination. And it is called out of phase diagram. See, the pressure that is indicated on the diagram will be 90 degrees out of phase with the piston movement. In other words, when the piston is at TDC, the, the diagram that will be taken out will be 90 degrees before TDC. When the piston is at 90 degrees after TDC, 
the pressures that will be recorded will be at TDC. So it is always 90 degrees ahead or out of phase with the diagram that comes about. Why it is, I am not very sure why that is. Because I think there is a delay in the, a difference in the time span between the movements of that indicator uh, instrument and the movement of the piston because it is a hand-drawn card. Next one is the compression diagram. This compression diagram is a measure of the compression pressure with the fuel cutoff. What we do, we cut off the fuel at the fuel pump and then take the pressure card. So that will indicate how much pressure is being built up by the piston during its upward stroke. So that Compression diagram is also very important, like I told you, to get an assessment of how good the integrity of the combustion chamber is, whether there is any leakage from the piston rings or from the valves or from any opening, indicator cock, etc. So that is essential. And the fourth one is called the light or weak spring diagram. This light or weak spring diagram is intended to see the breathing characteristics of the engine, whether the ports are choked, whether the exhaust valve is opening before its time, whether it is too late, whether there is any, you know, scavenge ports are choked. So these are indicated by the light or weak spring diagram. Next, fifth one, which I do not find very in, in, important or required on board. We have never had it of any relevance. Nevertheless, I put it on this particular page to keep you informed that the, such a diagram exists and I can't really relate to it much. But if you have time, do look up what this pressure derivative diagram is about. But it is very rarely obtained or used. It is not really giving much, but it is there in some of the books that I have been through. And they do not clearly tell exactly how the observations are made from this diagram. Now, this instrument, as it comes in a box, a jewelry box, it has Ravi Prakash, I hope you are here, scales and matching assorted springs. You may have multiple scales, maybe two or three scales with two or three springs. Each spring matches with each scale. On board the ship, you will have only one scale and one spring because the other two springs and other two scales are removed possibly by chief engineer so that there is no intermixing of the scales and the springs. So that whatever spring you use is the scale that you will use for that instrument. So it has to match. Next is special paper cards of size 150 into 65 millimeter. This dimension I have given as approximate it may be little variation from the size, but remember, it is about the size of a normal check, the check that you write in banks. Next, you have a spanner. This spanner is a little different. It's a small, it's about three inches, and it is basically a pipe. And that pipe end obviously has a hollow space in which the stud of that nut on the indicator instrument is written, and you can rotate the nut with a little more leverage. And that gives you the possibility of tightening the nut adequately because this tightness is very crucial and there should be no leakage of the gas coming out from the indicator cock getting past the indicator instrument. Then the pressure acting on that little piston inside that instrument will not be the pressure that is inside the combustion chamber. Thereby, it will give you a wrong reading on the card. See, there is possibility of so many errors if you do, if you are not careful. So it requires a lot of care in handling this instrument and taking the cards. Apart from the spanner, you also have a bottle of lubricating oil. This oil is specifically made and for the little piston that is inside that. It is much thinner oil as compared to the normal lubricating oil that you use on the engine. And last but not least, you have a cleaning brush. Because from the indicator cock, you get a lot of carbon and combustion debris, ash, hard particles, etc., which may settle inside that cylinder liner, inside that instrument. 
to give it, get it cleaned, you need to brush these off. And then with a little oil and maybe tissue paper, have the space cleaned. Okay. So this is all that we'll have for today, page nine. And we will continue in the next class. And I will explain to you all the diagrams that are coming about, how each of those cards come about. But that will come in the next class. So I hope you have been able to absorb something so that if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. I have liked the questions that you've asked here and I hope I've been able to address your queries. And if there is anything else that you wish to ask which I'm not able to answer properly, I will try and explain once again. Other than that, I think up to this, I'm also tired a little bit. So let us call it a day and we will continue in the next class. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. It's good that you asked some questions and clarified any doubt. Can we modify the skill? Ravi Prakash, no, you yes, can't. Sir, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, then you, take care. Okay, okay. Okay, bye bye. I'm putting up this recording. Stop recording. Okay.